Hi, and welcome to the digital job site where the boards are straight, the weather's great, and there really is a board stretcher. And this tutorial is going to show how simple it is to use SketchUp to calculate concrete volume. And to best show this, I've chosen a thickened edge slab with uh, some of the irregular angles that that type of uh, concrete pour can involve. And it looks like our guy here is all set up and ready to go with a wheelbarrow full of some low slump concrete and uh, we'll hide him but not after giving credit to uh, the working class hero wheelbarrow model that I got off of the out of the component warehouse this is an open source art and 3d sculpture project project and uh, we'll thank Max Gruder for his work and sending a guy to wheel the concrete today. Um, but with that bit of silliness out of the way, we'll uh, hide these this guy and turn off the shadows on our little job here. I'll zoom out so you can see uh, the nature of the, the concrete pour. And as I said, to set this up to be a thickened edge slab with various dimensions. I've just thrown a couple on here. You can see how the size that um, I put together for this. As you can see the slab is 1700, a little over 1700 square feet. I put this wing at a 30 degree angle, a little step out here, some various things just to show how uh, calculating the volume is, is uh, doesn't matter what the shape is or angles, calculating the volume is basically the same process. And uh, I'll zoom in here for the dimensions. I've got a total uh, pour with the, uh, this thickened edge of, of a foot thick. And as we pivot underneath, you can see that I've made the thickened edge 16 inches wide, a total of 12 inches thick. I'll show you this 8 inch dimension is showing the the amount of the, the depth of the thickened edge to be 8 inches which means that the main floor slab is 4 inches thick. If we throw a section plane on here and then uh, zoom through this with the move tool you can see inside the foundation uh, here's what the slab would look like. This would be mounted to earth or gravel inside. The 4 inch thick floor slab here uh, a foot thick on the outside, a 16 inch wide uh, base of the thickened edge, and then the tapered earth or gravel that, that forms the thickened edge. So that's the type of a slab that is drawn here. You can see as I move through that thickened edge follows through all the, the various angles and contours. And uh, that will give us our volume figure. And you can do all this stuff simple enough. On a, on a rectangular structure and uh, but as the the shape of things changes if you had a, an octagon bump out or a rounded wing here or something the the shape gets a little um, throws some wrinkles into the volume calculation if we delete that section plane and then select this uh, integral thickened edge slab foundation footing configuration and then I just right click this for entity information I come up with a volume of 787.66 cubic feet and try as I might I, I couldn't find a Ruby plug-in or anything to get this to display in cubic yards so the the most uh, backwards part of this process is having to divide this figure by 27 to end up with a uh, cubic yard, which is the standard format for ordering concrete. But anyways, after with that little overview of this model, I am going to select everything here and just hide it for now and show you the steps I used to create that. Again, I'm just taking random dimensions. Uh, obviously any project you would might be working on you're going to have your own dimensions but the process is the same. So let's just create a similar shape of a foundation. Just 
going to go 27 feet here. Looks like I got 27 inches. No, oh, no, I got 27 feet. Let me zoom out there. 27 feet. Let's go 14 feet this way. And 11 feet. 14 feet. Let's just pick up this line over here. See if we can infer that line. I'm holding down shift and that'll line me up with this point. It's coming here a ways. And I put that wing on the, the previous model at 30 degrees to the rest of the structure. So let's just do that again for grins here. The angle doesn't matter. The process is the same. 26 feet. Oops, I missed my angle there. I'm going to try to trace that. There we go. I'm going to go 21 feet. Throw a, degree, a 90 degree line to this if we can get it to snap to magenta. Looks like maybe this is going to fight me here. There it went. And we'll just go try that again. Get this to snap to magenta when it figure out, figures out what I'm trying to do. It's frustrating when it doesn't work and this, sometimes I end up just using a drawing plane to get this figured out, but I'm just going to put 90 degrees in here. I can draw this line. Annoying here. <laughs> Went about this a backwards way. And this is what I should have done. Just pick up here. There we go. I got some lines to draw to. This will give us a foundation outline. It's a whole lot more trouble than it was worth, as you can see. But that gives us an outline of a, a foundation. You can put dimensions on these if you want to keep track of dimensions you're working with, but they're not really necessary for this process. So after you establish the outline, the next step is to uh, draw an offset of, sorry, the next step is we're going to, we're going to pull the slab up the total of the slab thickness plus the thickness of the footing. In this case, it's just 12 inches. I'm going to spin the model upside down here and then Use the offset tool here, go 16 inches, and then the next offset line is going to be the thickness of the thickened edge. In this case, it's 8 inches, and you'll see why that's important at this point. We'll select this middle geometry, then take the move tool, and then with a little bit of keyboard magic, you can see down here. Along the bottom of the screen, it says Control uh, uh, to toggle copy. Alt equals toggle auto fold, and hold shift is lock the entrance. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key, then touch the Shift key, hold that down, and then the up arrow key. All those things together will get this center geometry to move vertically and auto fold, which folds these corners. And now I'm just going to tell it eight inches. And with that little bit of magic, we end up with our thickened edge slab. And I'm going to put that section line on here so you can see it again, what we just accomplished. So with that little bit of keyboard magic, we ended up creating a hollow integral slab and thickened edge uh, foundation system, just like that. The key to the whole process there is the auto fold. And I tried in working up this video, I tried making the four inch slab and then adding this footing, but it creates a separate volume for the thickened edge and the slab. If that's something you wanted, you could use a different set of steps to calculate the volumes. Uh, so we've got one step left. You can see if you select this whole thing and go to entity information, it doesn't give us a volume in there. It, 
it just talks about the 75 entities, which are the lines and faces that comprise this. So to get a volume, we're going to grab all that geometry and make it a group. As soon as we do the group, you can see that the volume is this is in this case because I use different dimensions, 620.26 cubic feet. There again, you divide that by 27 to end up with cubic yards. So with that set of steps, uh, whatever your uh, perimeter shape dimensions are, it doesn't matter. You create a an object, and SketchUp will calculate the volume very accurately with that. Of course, on in the, in the real world, you'd add a percentage of uh, overage or underage based on soil conditions. This is a, a perfect 45 degree angle. If you wanted to um, come up with a different slope here, or if you've got irregular dirt or gravel, you'd want to put in a percentage so you wouldn't end up short or long concrete by an unreasonable amount. So that's that's basically the way to figure out the volume. It's a pretty simple process. And just to go a little bit further on this, if you were doing this sort of thing, it would likely be a couple rows of rebar going around that footing. And because we've already established this perimeter and, and foundation, there's a pretty simple way to calculate what two runs of rebar around this irregular shape would be. So all I've done is selected the top surface of this. I'm going to copy it, then jump out of the the group uh, the group geometry there. Now I've got the perimeter of the foundation. All I'm going to do is take the offset tool and I'm going to come in four inches, which would be um, a reasonable amount to offset for the rebar and the footing, and then we'll go uh, another foot. Want this tool and come in another 12 inches. And so, if you can imagine in a 16 inch footing, if you come in four inches and then another 12, uh, those offset lines would represent rebar spaced out in that thickened edge slab. And to measure those entities, I'm going to delete these planes. And you can see if I double click this and then hold shift and deselect that, uh, that middle surface and right click one of these blue lines, I go to Entity Info, and that tells us that those two lines are 346 feet, 7 and 3 quarter inches exactly. Of course, that doesn't figure for bar lap and corners and stuff, but it would be a pretty close estimate of what the rebar is going to take, or what it would take for rebar to get around there. And if uh, you do the same thing, take this plane out of here and then double click, the inside is just under 170 feet. And uh, the outside, if I double click properly, get the whole thing, it's 178 feet about. So, with just a simple model of uh, a slab, a thickened edge slab, you can figure out uh, a rebar quantity. You could use the same thing if you did this, if you needed to know how much um, 12 inch material you'd need to form the outside of this. There you go, 180 feet. We'll get you there, and uh, so it's it's pretty simple to create the model, and uh, anything but a standard rectangle. Uh, you can see how letting SketchUp do your mud math uh, can really simplify the process. I hope you find that helpful, and uh, help it makes your projects projects go a little uh, more smoothly in the future. So thanks for watching the digital job site. Be sure to check out. Find homebuilding.com and the digital job site blog for uh, various um, notes on this video tutorial. Thanks again for watching.